Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to do something a little different. Um, in the previous solutions videos, I was kind of using the notes as a background, but as I was considering it and thinking about it, I just didn't really like the way that the notes were organized. So Momina, if you're watching this, because I told you I'd post it tonight, I made these especially for you. So um, with colligative properties, okay, because this was kind of the last thing from our unit, um, colligative properties are any kind of property that depends on the number of the particles of solute that are actually in the solution and not the identity of the solute. So it doesn't matter like which chemicals it is as long as it's a lot of them. So there are two that w there are three colligative properties, but we're only going to be learning about two of them. So the first one is boiling point elevation. And so this means that when you add your solute, what happens is you increase the boiling point. And so the reason why is because if we look here at this beaker, it has blue water and these dark blue dots are water molecules. Okay, now if they are trying to boil, meaning that they will go from a liquid into the gas phase, that means that they would escape the liquid and come up into the atmosphere and become a gas. That's what happens when you boil. Now the problem is if you start to add your solute in there. Because if you add solute into your container, well now in order for this gas molecule or water molecule to get to the surface, it's blocked by the purple solute that I just added. And so it takes more energy to like move around those molecules in order to boil and come into the atmosphere. To So to account for that extra um, energy, what happens is it has to get warmer. So the thermometer, let's say it's boiling at 100 degrees Celsius, right? Because that's the temperature that water boils at. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to see the temperature on your thermometer start to rise before it will even really begin to boil. And so that is boiling point elevation, just that adding solute increases the boiling point. Now, by the opposite measure, adding a solute um, with freezing point depression, so adding a solute is going to decrease your freezing point, which sounds different, but keep in mind that in order for a solid to freeze, so here we have some water molecules that are already starting to freeze and become a solid, and we've got these blue ones here that are liquid. Well, in order for them to freeze, they have to come close together and form a lattice and form, the, use their intermolecular forces to really bond. So you know, this little blue guy would move and become here, right? Um, that just looks funny. So they would have to move towards it in order to combine and join in. But again, if you add a solute into the solution, well now the water molecules have to move around the solute in order to like form the lattice and form those intermolecular forces and actually become a solid. And so in order for that to happen, the freezing point is actually lowered to a colder temperature. Like it has to get even colder in order for it to actually happen. So adding solute increases the freezing point. Adding solute, oh, I'm sorry. Adding solute decreases the freezing point. So let's make sure we're all on the same page there. Decreases the freezing point, but adding solute will increase your boiling point. So basically, if you have a thermometer and we know that it boils at 100 degrees Celsius and it freezes at zero degrees Celsius and in between these two temperatures, that is the range temperature range in which it's a liquid, well adding a solute will increase the boiling point and decrease the freezing point, which will increase the whole range that water remains a liquid, which is why it's very helpful in antifreeze um, slash engine coolant, depending on what time of season it is, 
because if you have water plus other things in there mixed in with the water, ethylene glycol, it will help keep your engine and your car from freezing during the winter um, because the water now has to get much colder in order to actually freeze. And it can prevent your car from overheating during the summertime when it's getting extremely hot. And so this helps kind of regulate your temperature there. Um, now, the thing is, is your your collocative properties are based on the amount. So um, a key note here with this is that the more particles there are, so more particles there are, the more dramatic the effect, okay? Meaning the larger the effect it will have. And so when we look at this, so like how do we actually change the number of particles? There are two ways. We can change the concentration. So for example, if I have a one molar solution of sodium chloride, or well, let's just say, because it's not a solution. Let's say I could add just one moles, one mole of sodium chloride, or I could add three moles of sodium chloride. Well, this is more moles than this one, so this would have a larger effect, meaning that if I have three moles of sodium chloride in one water solution and one mole of sodium chloride in another solution, the one with three is going to have a higher boiling point and a low, lower freezing point than the one with just one. And if we look, um, so we can just change the concentration, just change the amount. But you can also change the solute because what if you can't change the amount? What if you have exactly, you know, 10 moles of NaCl, so salt, but you also have 10 moles of sugar, so C6H12O6. Well, the thing you have to keep in mind is how they dissolve in water. Because again, when you have sugar, which is covalent, when it dissolves, it undergoes solvation only. So that means when it dissolves, its particle is still going to look like this, H12O6. Okay, so that's just one particle times 10 moles, so however many particles you have. But NaCl is ionic, okay, which means when it dissolves, it's solvation and dissociation, which means that it will break apart. And so now you have an Na plus ion and a Cl minus ion, which is two particles. So when you start off, you both, you start off with just one NaCl and one sugar, but yet at the end, once it's mixed in the solution, you end up with two particles for NaCl and only one particle for sugar. And so that means that um, our 10 moles is going to have the larger effect. And so you can see this in multiple ways. We can say that if I have two moles of NaCl and I have two moles of MgCl2 and I have two moles of potassium phosphate. Okay, they're all ionic, but when they dissociate, this one will produce an A positive and Cl minus, so that's two particles. This one will dissolve into magnesium with a positive two charge, and two chlorines, because we have that subscript two here, which means I have two chlorines. And so that is a total of three particles. And this one, uh, potassium phosphate, we know that it will produce three potassium ions that have a plus one charge and one phosphate ion with a negative three charge. So that's a total of four particles, which means even though their concentration is the same number of moles, because potassium phosphate has four particles compared to three or compared to two, that means it will have the larger effect on our boiling point. 
So, hopefully, um, you understand colligative properties and boiling point and freezing point, uh, well, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and whatnot. Good luck studying for your test.